Peggy Santilia Davison. She was the lead singer of the Angels. You remember my boyfriend's back? She has had a long career as a psychotherapist. She, uh, she, she did a various things. She had her own line of cosmetics for a while, and she tried this and tried that. None of it was quite satisfying to her. She has a psychotherapy practice. She lives in uh, the Baltimore area. And among the areas that she counsels people in is how to overcome stage fright. You know, and, and stage fright in this case is getting up and standing, having the courage to stand, stand up and talk in a meeting or you know, appear before the city council so you're not shaking in your boots. She works with people to overcome stage fright because she knows. She's been there. She's done that. Uh, she was singing on stage when she was 15 years old. Um, some folks went into TV. Bobby Goldsboro, who is in, in this chapter here, remember watching Scotty grow and Honey and you know, so forth. He, uh, he was host of a syndicated TV show in the, in the mid-70s called The Bobby Goldsboro Show. And at the time, it was the highest rated nationally syndicated TV program in the country. Um, Dave Gard also was a TV host in Australia. If you remember a group called the Bo Brummels? Sure. Yeah. And uh, one of the Bo Brummels lives in Sacramento, actually, Sal Valentino. But uh, John Peterson, who was the drummer of the Bo Brummels, owned a bed and breakfast inn in Placerville after the Brummels broke up. Just something he, he and his wife wanted to do. Uh, Zal Yanofsky of the Love and Spoonful owned a restaurant in, uh, in Canada, and he continued operating. It was called Shea Piggy. Uh, 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 until he uh, died in, uh, in uh, 02. Um, Nick Reynolds, after he left the Kingston Trio, Nick pursued his interest in sports cars and, and, uh, and classic cars, and he was working on rebuilding those in the Bay Area, and then he decided he really needed to get away. Nick was the shortest guy in the Kingston Trio, in the original Trio. And uh, Nick and his wife bought some property in Oregon. They bought a ranch. He didn't know a thing about ranching, but he bought this property and he learned. You know, he, he got some help from his neighbors. It was very rural. And then he bought the movie theater in town and he operated that for a while. And then he returned to what he really wanted to do because at the time the Kingston Trio was formed in 1957, it was just a bunch of guys having fun playing at beer parties. That's all they did. They, were, they, were, they hung out at Stanford. Uh, one of them went there, two of them went to Menlo College, and uh, they just played for the fun of it. Well, it turned out that they, you know, it turned into a thing bigger than anyone imagined, and they became the, the biggest, most popular recording act in the world. With a, at the time, Nick was, was going to Menlo College, majoring in hospitality. He wanted to go into the restaurant business, and that's what his real dream was. And after the trio broke up and after he got tired of ranching in Oregon, he moved back down to Coronado, where he had grown up in San Diego, and got a job working as a manager at a bar and grill. And he loved it. 